Hey everyone, if you are searching for free open source backup software that support Windows client and server operating system, including Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 11, and server version from 2008 to 2022, as well as the Linux and Mac OS, you have come to right place. Welcome back to our channel Go Dynamic IT. In today's video, we will configure a duplicate for local backups and encryption and show you how to access the duplicate web interface from another PC. Okay, so let's get into the video and try to configure our software duplicate. So we have to go to the browser and the BR browser we have to type duplicate. In the duplicate, this first link will come. So we have to go and click the first link. And it says uh, zero Thrust full encrypted backup. That's fine. See, the interesting part is that they have a pro version also and they have an ultimate version also. But we will go with the free version, free for use. And this does all the tasks it is supposed to do. It, it monitor up to five machines and uh, view that you got 200 backups. No problem. So let's go with uh, open source and download. You can see this is the open source software and we have to click the download here. And we have to download, as I said in the video, it will support the Mac and it support the Linux also. So let's download this Windows one as of now. So it's downloading now. It should be the quick one. Okay, so download is completed. Now we have to go ahead and install it. May You may get this pop-up on your Windows. It's asking about your protect your PC, but don't worry about that. This is the trusted software. You have to click on the more information here and then run anyways and the installation will start so this is very pretty simple installation you have to just go click and install it it's as simple so you can see here this installation is completed and now we have to click on the finish let's close this one okay so you can see the icon here duplicate 2 so click here on this icon and now it will open the web browser so actually this is this interface is given in the web inter interface itself so you can whatever task you want to do you can go ahead and do with this interface itself as of now it's opening on the local host and the port number is 8200 also so later in the video i will show you how you can access this application through the different pc so as of now let's go ahead and take the backup so we'll so you can see this is the interface is very clean and neat interface so there are only four options on here on this uh, desktop home add backup restore settings and about so let's go and click on the add backup here say so that do you want to configure the new backup yes i want to configure the new backup here so let's create on the next and it says that general backup setting so what backup what is the name of your file so i want to give my name as an important file and then you want to give the description or description is always important important files like now he says that what type of encryption you want so this is very important by default it's giving you the aes 256 which is the the best one i would say so let's keep it as it is and it will support the gnu privacy guard also if you want to select you can select the gnu also but uh, for me to aes 256 is going to work here so now we're asking about the password so password is like you know the encryption right so when you encrypt any data it will create a shield on top of it so just lock that particular file or you can see that until unless you put the password on it it's not going to open it so let's put the password in it says now you can see this says that the strong password so click on the next and now you can see the first line you can see the backup destination where you want to take the back so i would like to take the backup on my you can see the storage type as of now is selected is a local folder or the drive that's our task for this this video so let's select this uh, f is my removal drive let's say this is the external drive so i would like to go with the backup on the F drive itself. So I have selected the F drive and now it says that do you have any username authentication? So no, there is no authentication on any drive. This is applicable for the network drive. And it says password, no, you can say test connection. Test connection is only when you have like a network uh, drives and all. And it says the optional, what do you want to do that? If you want to configure any additional uh, task here, like you can see in the local folder, yeah, there are lots of options here on this one. You just go ahead with your requirements. So I would select the next here and then it says that source data. Source, source data means which data you want to back. So my data is on desktop. Let's see, select the desktop here and you can see this is the important file. Let me show you what are the files in the important one. So if you go to the desktop and important files, you can see the couple of files here, which is let's delete this history one. I don't want this file, this unnecessary one. So you can see here I have a couple of photos here and then I have one videos. This is Excel file, doc file, image file and these are the two txt doc. So that's fine. This is what the general users have this, this kind of data in their hard drive, right? So and you can take the, any type of data you can back up it up, trust me. So just close this one and then you have to click on the so so here before we click on the next so just close and click the filter so what is the filter here so when you click on the filter they said exclude expression so what do you want to exclude here 
So you want to uh, the file name or the file extension. Let's select the file extension. So I would like to exclude the ISO file because ISO files are generally like uh, the bigger in the size. Like let's example of the Windows operating system. I have downloaded the Windows operating system and I kept it in that particular folder. And I don't want unnecessary to this file to be backup, right? And it could be that exe. Let's say I've downloaded some software from the internet. I'm seriously don't want to backup this software also, right? Uh, the exe file. So we can go ahead and you can filter it like this all. And you can they say this exclude. What do you want to exclude? I don't want to literally take the backup of the hidden file, system file. Let's say like the hidden file, system file, temporary files. Those files are unimportant or any file which are larger than that. Let's say you have some file across the 100 MB or something 200 MB. It depends on your size, right? So let's say I have a requirement that it's not support 200 megabytes. So you can go ahead and select that. Let me remove this feature and then click on the next. And it says that when you want to take the, you want to run the automatically backup, which date you want to back. So you say the next time is 13 means one o'clock or run again every day. So you want to run it every day or you want to run week, weekly, monthly, yearly, how you want to do that. So let's say I want to run uh, for, uh, so every day I want to run this backup. So which date you are allowed, you can select this date. So Monday to Sunday, you can select the date here. So this is going to be the incremental one. So here now we say the remote volume size is like 50 megabytes. It will split the multi-file called volume. This is the remote volume size and inside the backup retention. The back, keep the all backup or delete the backup than older than a smart backup. So let's select the smart backup retention. This is the always be the smart choice to select this one until unless you have some specific option to select from these options so you say that over the time over the time backup will be deleted automatically there will be remaining one backup for each for seven days each for four days and each for 12 months 12 months at least for one year so this is good for me right and this is what is the advanced option so in advanced option, you have to, again, it's asking for that, what version you want to, how encryption is going to work. These are the all options you have given. You have to go and pay the attention on it. And there are lots of lots of options here. You can go ahead and do that. You can run the script. You can send the email. Like if the once the backup completed, it will send you the email. There is lots of option, option here. Just spend some time over here. Once you come here and then go ahead and select the pick the next one so next click on the save it says that uh, you have generated a strong password make sure that you make the copy of it so i know what password i have given so select on the now it says that this is you can see this is the home page it says that this is the important file backup as long as you create a backup on this one it will show you on the home page so it, maybe this is running for tomorrow this is for local hard this is for the hard drive external hard drive you can have a multiple backups of your folder to the different different locations yeah, that is very much possible. So as you can see, we have backup is done. Backup creation is done. Now it's time to select the run now. Let's see how it's going to backup. Oh, it says that it's very quick. It says that backup successfully completed. And as the next schedule is tomorrow and source is 32 MB and backup is 32. This is the first version. So let's go back to our drive, external drive here. External drive is our F drive. And F drive, you can see here, this is created at the backup. And this is all you can see here. This is the AES encryption. AES encryption is very strong encryption. Even though someone gets your file from somehow from your hard drive, he cannot use this one. Even though he installed it, uh, duplicate software on his system and try to restore it, this is not going to work because this is encrypted and you have the key for it. Only you can open this encryption. Now the question I've told you that how do we access it from, since this is support the web version of this application, can we try to access the, it from the different machine in our LAN. Let's see the IP address of this machine. So, and the IP address of this machine is 192.168.186.128. Okay. And let me bring you my different PC here. Uh, let me keep this side by side so that it will be easy for you to understand. Let's type the IP config, IP config. And see, this is a different IP, 192.169.214. And this is 186.128. But that's fine. I have a in between i have a route so this is this ip will be uh, reachable for me so let me show you should be reachable for me 128 so does not matter whether you have a same ip or a different ip the ip reachable sh reachability should be there that's the important okay so you can see this ip you can see the different ip but i have a reachability but what you have to do is we have to go to the settings and inside the settings you have to allow this remote access you can see here this is this select here allow this remote access name you have to put this ip address the current IP address which you have. So let's put the current IP address here 192.168.86.128 and click on the OK and restart your machine. So let me restart the machine and come back to you. Okay, you can see my Windows is back now. Let's log into our Windows and open the software. Okay, so it's open. Now let's go back to our browser here and we have to type 
this paste it here it says that secure not connection as so we have to remove the HTTPS from here and now you can see I am able to access it from my different machine on the line itself and you can go ahead and take the backup you can go ahead and create a new backup here so this is how you can go ahead and take your backup I think that's it for today's video if you have any questions concern or any feedback related to this video please do let me know in the comment box and thank you very much for watching my video see you in the next one